everyone, welcome back to another tool tutorial. So every single time I post a project where I use a nail gun, I get questions about it. Which nail gun are you using? What nail gun should I buy because I am a real beginner? Why did you pick this nail gun? Why not a pneumatic nail gun? What is the difference between an angled nail gun and a straight nail gun or what's a pin nailer used for? I get so many, so many questions. So today we are going into all of the details about nail guns and answering all of your questions. We will talk about the differences between the gauges and pneumatic versus not and battery operated electrical. We'll go into all the details. So let's get started. First off, in case you're still wondering, what is a nail gun? A nail gun is a power tool which is a replacement of hammer and nails and it is obviously great for your fingers, it helps you save your fingers and it makes projects much quicker and much easier to complete. I consider a nail gun to be one of the basic power tools you want to have in your workshop because it makes things so much easier and it is worth every penny. So what exactly would you use a nail gun for? You would use it in any situation where you want to quickly attach trim or wood. The only place you cannot use a nail gun or rather use nails is on joints that are going to be bearing shearing forces. So in that case you want to use screws, you can use pocket hole screws, you can use countersunk screws, but any other situation where you're simply tacking on a piece of wood and they're not going to be seeing any stresses, you can use a nail gun. So some examples of that are assembling small wood projects, applying trim on furniture, installing baseboard, installing board and batten, installing wood floors or even decks. There are so many more applications and like I mentioned, a nail gun is worth every single penny. Now that brings us to the question I get very, very often and that is which nail gun do I need? Now there are three things that you need to consider before you pick a nail gun for a project or even a nail gun that you want to purchase. The gauge of the nail gun, the cordless versus pneumatic nail gun, and straight versus angled nail guns. And don't let that intimidate you. We're going to break it all down so you know exactly what all of that means and what to use when and which one to get. So first up, let's talk about gauge. Gauge refers to the number of nails per inch if the nails are laid out next to each other like really tight. So that means that it also defines the thickness of the nails and that defines the strength of the nails. And because you're looking at how many nails are laid out next to each other in an inch, the thicker the nails, the lower the number of nails you can have in an inch. So the higher the gauge, the thinner the nails. The lower the gauge, the thicker the nails. And the most common nail sizes are 16 gauge, 18 gauge and 23 gauge. And the gauges are not interchangeable so you cannot use 23 gauge nails in a 16 gauge nail gun and so on. And in fact the gauge is what defines the three types of nail guns. We have a finished nail gun which uses 16 gauge nails, we have a brad nail gun which uses 18 gauge nails, and we have a pin nailer which uses 23 gauge nails. So before we dive into each of these nailers, let's do a quick comparison of what each of these nails looks like. So this here is a strip of 16 gauge nails. Of course it is angled because I have an angled finish nailer but you can get them straight if you have a straight finish nailer as well. This is a strip of 18 gauge nails and this is a strip of 23 gauge nails. These 23 gauge nails do not have a head and you have these arrows showing you which way is the pointy end of these nails. So this is how the nail heads look like. Top is 16, then 18, then 23 gauge. And this is what they look like from the side so you can see the thickness difference. And this is what each of them looks like once you put them in. As you can see the 16 gauge nails have a bigger head, the 18 gauge is kind of in the middle and you can barely even see the 23 gauge nails. So let's talk about all of these three nail guns in more detail and where you would use what. 
So first off, let's talk about finish nailers. Finish nailers or trim nailers as they are called are typically 16 gauge nail guns. You can have 15 gauge nail guns as well. So this here is a 16 gauge nail gun. It's also an angled nail gun, but we'll talk about that feature later on. But a 16 gauge nail gun uses 16 gauge nails, which are pretty thick and have a pretty big head. So they are pretty strong nails and you can use them without using glue. So some examples of that is installing baseboards, crown molding, trim work around the cabinets and even hardwood flooring. Now let's go on to brad nailers. Brad nailers are 18 gauge nail guns. The nails have heads that are much smaller than the 16 gauge nails and can be hidden much easily below the surface. They're pretty general purpose nail guns and can be used for when you have situations where you do not want the wood to split. You would need to use wood glue with a brad nailer except in probably home improvement projects like attaching baseboards or attaching crown molding. I like using it for woodworking projects and there, it's almost like my little helping hand to hold things together while glue dries. Of course, the glue is doing most of the work and not the nails. It just acts like a little mini clamp. So I use it in small woodworking projects or to attach trim to my projects or to temporarily hold drawer fronts in place while I add the final screws to it. Also because the nail head is small enough and it can go below the surface that you can easily put wood putty over it and cover it up and go ahead and paint or stain it. Last up is the pin nailer. A pin nailer uses 23 gauge headless pins and these are really really thin and they pretty much disappear into your project. They are great when you need a little helping hand and in situations where you cannot use clamps. You can use it for finishing details in your woodworking projects or even in home improvement projects. Like I used it to hold the vinyl flooring in place on my stairs while the liquid nails dried. Now let's talk about pneumatic versus cordless versus electric nail guns. The main difference between all of these three is how the nails are shot out. With an electric nail gun, the mechanism is powered by electricity. I don't have a pneumatic nail gun, but in case of a pneumatic nail gun, it is powered by compressed air that is coming from a compressor. And in the case of a cordless nail gun, it is battery powered. So this here is just a little bit different because it has a battery, but that is used to trigger the fuel cell that goes in in here which is what powers the nail. This is a really really great mechanism and I love how powerful this nail gun is. So first up I don't have a pneumatic nail gun but the advantages of a pneumatic nail gun is that it is very lightweight, it is much cheaper if you already own the compressor, it can be run continuously so you do not have to worry about recharging your batteries. Of course the electric nail gun can be run continuously as well but having a pneumatic nail gun also means that every time you move with the nail gun you have to also move the compressor with you which is pretty big and bulky and the compressors can be really really loud. In fact every time you shoot the nail gun it makes a loud pop and it can be pretty startling. Also the compressors take up a lot of storage space so if you don't have a compressor yet and if you are not planning on having any other tools that run with a compressor you probably want to consider a cordless or an electric nail gun. This is an electric nail gun and it works incredibly well but it is still corded. Now a cordless nail gun, of course, there are no cords so you can take it to wherever you want, especially when you are doing something like trim work or adding crown molding. You do not want to have cords as you are taking it all the way up to apply the nails. They are much quieter than the pneumatic versions. It is heavier than a pneumatic nail gun or an electric nail gun because the battery adds a whole bunch of weight to it. It is also more expensive than the other two. However, if you already have batteries of the brand to use, that will be much cheaper than purchasing an air compressor for your nail gun. But of course, because they are cordless and they are using the battery, you have to always have at least an extra battery that is ready to go because if you're continuously using it, you might run out of the charge. Now let's quickly talk about the difference between an angled finish nailer versus a straight finish nailer. The angled nail gun takes 
angled nails. But that does not mean that it shoots the nails out at an angle. It still shoots the nails straight out. The only difference is that because of the way it's angled versus this, you can get into tighter spots. So that's especially useful if you do a lot of trim work in the house or baseboards, getting into those really tight corners is a lot easier because of this angled magazine right here. We're gonna do a quick run through of the parts of the nail gun and how to use it. But before that, let's talk safety. First and foremost, anytime you are not using a nail gun, like right now, do not have the batteries inserted, ever. Or if it is a corded nail gun, don't have it plugged in. Or if it's a pneumatic nail gun, don't have it plugged into the compressor. I'm going to be going through the brand that I have and even though they all have the same features, they can be operated differently. So be sure to read the manual for your brand of nail gun before you start using it. And always, always, always you want to wear eye protection anytime you are using a nail gun. There are a couple other things you need to remember for safety and I will show you exactly what that is while we are operating the nail gun. Now let's talk about the parts of the nail gun. I will be using the Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer for this, but like I mentioned, almost all the brands have similar features. They may be operated differently, but the features remain the same. This is the handle, which is where you hold the nail gun while you're operating it. This is the trigger, which you wanna depress to shoot the nails out. Down here is the battery port, and this is where you simply pop your battery in. If you have a pneumatic nail gun, you will have ports down here to attach the hose to. And down here is the magazine latch, and this is what you open to add your nails into the magazine. This is the magazine. This is what holds the nails that you will be using. And usually it just closes right up. Right here, we have a little knob that you can use to adjust how deep your nails are going to be pushed in. And last but not the least, we have the safety of the nail gun. This needs to be depressed for the nail gun to operate. So if you just hit the trigger like this, nothing is going to happen. Of course, right now I don't have any battery in there, but if I did and accidentally hit the trigger, nothing would happen. This needs to be depressed against your project for the nail gun to operate. The only difference I have found with the pin nailer in this case is that the safety is right here. So you need to pull this down and then you are able to hit the trigger. Without that, the trigger cannot be depressed. Now let's go ahead and use a nail gun, which is super easy to do. First thing, of course, we're going to do is load the nails into the nail gun. You wanna make sure you use the right nails for your project. Then go ahead and connect the power source. If you're using a pneumatic nailer, you wanna attach the compressor and hold the gun perpendicular to the surface to avoid shooting at an angle. And press the tip firmly down and pull the trigger and that is it. Now there are a few things to keep in mind to be safe as well as to have the best outcome. Number one is to use the right size of nails. And by that I mean the length of the nails because the thickness of the nails is already defined by the nail gun that you are using. But in terms of the length of the nail, you wanna be sure to use at least double the length of the board that you are attaching. Don't connect to your power source until you are ready to start nailing, which also means that do not load nails in your magazine while the power source is connected. And if for any reason your nail gun gets jammed, the first thing you wanna do is take off that power source before you go ahead and open up the mechanism to find that jammed nail. Now, anytime you are attaching two boards and you need to hold them together, make sure to keep your fingers away from the joint where you are nailing because sometimes nails can curl through the joint and pop out on the sides and you do not want it going into your fingers. Trust me, I have been there. So finally, let's get to the most asked question. I am a beginner and which nail gun should I buy? Well, that depends on what kind of projects you are going to be doing. If you need maximum holding power, a 16 gauge nail gun is your answer. If you are going to be doing a lot of delicate work, 
then you probably want a pin nailer. The 18 gauge brad nailer is right in the middle and can be used for both situations. So if you are just starting out and you want to buy a nail gun, I would highly, highly recommend an 18 gauge brad nailer. If you have the budget, this is a great nail gun to start off with. But if you don't, you can also start off with an electric nailer. I will add a link to all of these nail guns that I use in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know or just drop by and say hi in the comments. And let me know which tool tutorial you would like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.